Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding EME. In this presentation, we'll provide a short technical explanation of EME, or Earth-Moon-Earth -Earth propagation, as well as how EME can be used for communications at VHF and higher frequencies. Under normal propagation conditions, natural terrestrial reflectors, such as mountains, can be used to extend the range of signals at VHF and higher frequencies. The same principle can be applied to the Earth's moon, which can, under certain conditions, be used to reflect radio signals and thereby increase maximum communications range. The first experiments into EME, or moon bounce, were started by the United States military in the 1940s. And, by the 1950s and 1960s, EME was shown to be viable for use in both radar and communications. Although EME was never widely adopted for these applications, it was successfully used for many years in SIGINT, or Signals Intelligence Applications. For example, the Arecibo dish in Puerto Rico was used during the Cold War to monitor Soviet signals that were unintentionally reflected back to Earth by the Moon. In modern times, EME propagation is primarily used by radio amateurs. Why use the Moon as a reflector? The biggest advantage of EME is that it can provide reliable and predictable worldwide coverage at VHF and higher frequencies. This is not possible using any other propagation mode. But as we'll discuss, the ability to use EME is strongly dependent on the position of the Moon and both stations. However, once this condition is satisfied, EME is highly reliable when using proper equipment, in large part because although the path loss is very high, it's also well known and relatively constant. Another advantage of EME is that it's not dependent on ionospheric or tropospheric propagation conditions, unlike most other HF or VHF propagation modes. This in turn means that EME can be used as a backup or fallback method if communications do not support using other propagation modes. There are, however, significant challenges in using EME, and these can be grouped into two categories. The first is the very high path loss, which in turn requires high transmit powers, high gain transmit and receive antennas, and sensitive low noise receivers. The second is that the moon itself is a challenging reflector. The moon is both a small target as well as a moving target, and it also has a very rough and irregular surface. Let's take a closer look at each of these challenges. We'll start with path loss. Path loss is, by far, the greatest challenge when using EME. The two-way path loss between the Earth and its moon is often 250 dB or more, and this path loss increases with increasing frequency. Path loss is a function of many factors, one of which is the distance between the Earth and its moon, which changes due to the moon's elliptical orbit. Path loss can vary by about 2 dB between apogee, that is when the moon is farthest away, and perigee when the moon is closest to Earth. Using high transmit power is the primary method used to overcome this high path loss in EME. In addition to high transmit powers, high gain antennas are another way of overcoming path loss. EME antennas are usually either large parabolic antennas or arrays of antennas. Ideally, antennas used for EME should have circular polarization or switchable polarization in order to deal with losses due to Faraday rotation. We'll come back to this topic later in the presentation. And regardless of antenna type, EME requires antennas that are adjustable in both azimuth and in elevation since the moon is a moving target that must be tracked as it moves across the sky. The high EME path loss also means that reducing received noise is critically important in EME. Like most other forms of radio communication, noise in EME can be from external sources, in this case either on the Earth or in space, or the noise can be internal, that is generated from components and devices within the EME system or receiver itself. Since the received signals can be very small, using sensitive receivers and low noise amplifiers is vital when operating EME, with noise figure often being the most important figure of merit when building an EME system. Time of day can also play a role in reducing noise, 
and nighttime operation is sometimes preferred since this can reduce the amounts of both man-made and solar noise. And finally, the position of the moon in the sky can also affect the amount of received noise. Let's take a closer look at why this is. Regarding the position of the moon, clearly it must be above the radio horizon for both stations. Atmospheric refraction does however mean that the moon can be used as a reflector even when it's slightly below the geographic horizon. In fact, in some cases it can be advantageous to operate EME when the moon is low in the sky, as this can provide ground gain of several dB. But as mentioned a moment ago, the position of the moon in the sky also influences the amount of received noise. Various celestial bodies, such as planets, generate radio frequency noise. Another way of saying this is that at any given time, some parts of the sky are more quiet than others. In particular, the sun and the moon should not be too close together in the sky when operating EME. Although there are tools available for estimating the best operating time for a pair of stations, the declination of the moon can often offer some guidance. Declination is the elevation of the moon relative to the equator. The moon moves through a declination range of approximately plus to minus 25 degrees over the course of a month. Generally speaking, the higher the declination, the lower the received noise. Since the moon is also a moving target, both EME stations must track and point their antennas at the moon as it moves across the sky. As seen from the Earth, the moon moves through a 2-5 to five degree arc approximately every 10 minutes, so antennas must be periodically repointed to follow the moon, typically every 5-10 to 10 minutes. The antenna repointing frequency or interval, that is, how often the antenna must be repositioned, is also partly a function of the antenna beam width. An antenna with a narrower main beam will need to be repointed more often than an antenna with a wider beam width. The relative motion between the moon and the earth also means that signals reflected from the moon will be shifted in frequency. When the moon is rising or moving towards the observer, received signals will be shifted up in frequency. And when the moon is setting, or moving away from the observer, the frequencies will be shifted downwards. It's worth noting that most of this relative motion is due to the rotation of the Earth. Like all other Doppler shifted signals, the amount of shift depends on the frequency, with greater Doppler shift occurring for higher frequency signals. The surface of the moon also plays a role in EME communications. An effective radio frequency reflector should be large and flat or smooth. Large here means large relative to the wavelength of the signals. Although the moon clearly meets the size requirement, it's not a particularly good reflector due to its rough and uneven surface. The moon's surface scatters rather than reflects most of the signals reaching it, and therefore only about 6-7% to of the signal received by the moon is reflected in the direction of the Earth. The situation is made worse by the fact that the moon wobbles slightly, and this loss due to wobbling is called libration fading. As one might expect, libration fading causes fluctuation in received signal power, with the variation in loss usually up to several dB. This in turn sometimes causes choppiness or fluttering in demodulated EME signals. One final topic we need to address is the role of the ionosphere in EME. At HF, and sometimes at VHF, refraction or bending back of signals by the ionosphere is desirable because this can increase the maximum communications range. However, in EME we need signals to pass through the ionosphere. Some uncommon VHF propagation modes, such as sporadic E, can cause the ionosphere to return VHF signals to Earth, and therefore prevent EME communications. Another potential ionospheric issue is Faraday rotation. Faraday rotation refers to random changes in the polarization of a signal as it passes through the ionosphere. This rotation tends to be inversely related to frequency, and is generally limited to signals under about 1 GHz. Faraday rotation can lead to so-called polarization loss, whereby signal strength is reduced due to a mismatch 
between the polarization of the transmit and receive antennas. Using circularly polarized antennas, or rotating a linearly polarized antenna, are the two most common ways of reducing the effects of Faraday rotation in EME. Let's end with a brief summary. Despite being several hundred thousand kilometers away, the Earth's moon can be used to reflect radio frequency signals, and this enables worldwide communication using frequencies from low VHF to up around 1 gigahertz. Unlike many other propagation modes, Earth Moon Earth, or EME, is highly reliable and is generally independent of both ionospheric and tropospheric conditions. The greatest challenge in EME is the very high path loss, meaning that EME communication normally requires high transmit powers, high gain antennas, and low noise receivers. In addition, the Moon is also a challenging target, since it is small, moving, and has a rough, uneven surface that tends to scatter rather than reflect radio signals. The position of the Moon in the sky relative to the Sun and other celestial objects also can significantly affect the amount of received noise. And although EME is largely unaffected by solar-related variations in the ionosphere, EME signals passing through the ionosphere do experience Faraday rotation, or a random change in their polarity. And for this reason, circularly polarized or adjustable polarization antennas are preferred when using EME. This concludes our presentation, Understanding EME. If you'd like to learn more about propagation modes, or about Rodian short solutions for radio communications, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.